probably seen the video that I made earlier on my Northern Plains style horse ball. And uh, the, the tribes I'm really referring to would be probably the Lakota and the Nakota and uh, the Dakota and, you know, all the tribes that occupied the Northern Plains. Anyway, after they had been to the horse, the bow developed from, you know, a longer version down to the shorter horse bow that we know today. Hovering around 48 inches, plus or minus. Now, people have asked me, can I make, um, say, Northern Plains horse bows out of Osage Orange or extend them to 60 inches so they can get a full draw? And the question lies in, then, they're not really Northern Plains horse bows, are they? Um, of course, Osage was used, you know, later in later um, periods, but at one time it wasn't really accessible um, to the people in, in that area. Osage grew in the Missouri Valley, you know, and it had to be transported a lot of miles to get up there. And so bows were made out of woods that were accessible, um, cedar, juniper, oaks, ash. Um, hop horn, beam cherry, walnut, and, and so they weren't, you know, usually the typical bows that we think about. So I wanted to hold true um, to the, the style and, and the feeling of those actual bows. So I developed my 48 inch bow well within the range of accuracy as far as length um, for red oak. Uh, a bow that would have been accessible and would have been sinew backed because it's a highly stressed little bow. And just to give you some idea, you'll get a close up here. Um, pulling it back, they were short bow, short draw bows, and not necessarily even anchored. You know, anchorless shots. And so we look at this, and we're looking at 65 pounds. Now I could certainly with sandpaper 80 grit because I'm selling my bow blanks on the heavier side um, but being short limbs and I tillered it to look like this I could have um, thinned it out here to get more bend right there but it does bend um, and, and so the bow blanks that I'm supplying to you will create a sinew back bow with little if no tillering work with the sinew layers, if they're not that even, you'll have to sand a little bit, but basically the bow blanks are, are finished and ready to go once, you know, it dries. We'll be in that range. And so, it, I don't know what length that was. It was whatever length 65 inches or 65 pound gives you. You get a short, stout, powerful, compact hunting weapon that this, keeping in the spirit of the plains, um, natives, the, the First Nations people that use these bows from horseback and, and foot, you know. Um, this is a hunting weapon. This is a viable hunting weapon. It may take a little bit more practice um, with a short bow, possibly anchorless. You can modify your anchor and get an anchor um, to use it for a hunting bow, but you know, that's that's a personal, a personal thing. And so I am supplying you with a beautifully designed, which when I unstring this, I still have reflex, because the limbs are wide enough, they are thin enough, and with the bending forms, you get the deflex in the limbs and the, the setback in the handle. And, and so you have everything you need to actually create a reproduction bow, you know, that represents the bow type on the northern plains during a certain time period. As far as a question of like the wood and this is a it has a berth and a board bow, they would use the actual um, people using these things back in the day, uh, wood not only from trees but also from the staves from barrels, white oak and um, wagon wheels or other such things. So, you know, it's not out of the question um, to say that they made board bows too. But I'll give you a short look at this fine little weapon. Now you can certainly finish it as a self bow. I wouldn't recommend it unless you are a skilled um, bow maker and a bow, a wooden bow user. But I intended this to be sinew backed. Eight tendons, 
nine, ten, somewhere in there. You can buy a ten pack um, of white-tailed deer tenons from Mike Yancey at Pine Hollow Longbow, and I'd say maybe a quarter pound of hide glue, so you have some extra. Whatever hand wrap you want to use, um, cherry bark, buckskin, which this is, you know, the choice is yours. This would make a beautiful bow to snakeskin back, and I was asking my wife earlier, should I snakeskin back, and she's like, no, she really loves the texture of the sinew, and I have to agree, that's just a little dark oil stain on here. Now, as far as waterproofing, you could do the time-honored method of, like, you know, pitch or grease. However, there's a product, it's uh, Minwax, it's the Ultimate Floor Finish, which is a water-based polyurethane. And water base has the advantage over an oil finish because it doesn't dry brittle. Um, boiled linseed oil, which some people use, can grow mold. And so if you don't want to go grease or um, pitch, which, you know, has its own problems, or snakeskin backing it to get some water protection, you know, uh, that ultimate floor finish by Minwax, if you do a lot of sinew back bows or raw, rawhide back bows would work. Anyway, um, your bow, short, compact weapon, highly stressed limbs. This brace height is about four inches. They were not tall brace, um, braced bows. It's just too hard on the limbs because it's a short bow and you have to squeeze every um, bit of energy out of it without causing it to fail or um, degrade. And so short brace height. And that is about it. I hope you can see that. This is one st stiff bow, and again, you know, this would cast an arrow through a deer, and you can always, just sanding it evenly, it's almost no thought process. Eight strokes, eight strokes, measure it, eight strokes full length, eight strokes full length, until you get it down, and that's a good way to um, reduce the, the, the draw weight without incurring a lot of problems with tillering just because I'm supplying you with a tillered bow, basically, I, I can't say because it wasn't strong, but chances are it's very well tillered, even strokes with your 80 grit sandpaper along the limbs, same number on each side, you're good to go. And here we go. It may be a collectible in your eyes. It could be your main hunting weapon if you're willing to invest the time in learning how to use a short um, draw no anchored bow. If you want to actually understand what it feels like to shoot one of those horse bows, one of the actual horse bows, this is your chance, sports fans, right here. You got it. 40 inches long, um, beautifully designed again, wide, thin limbs, so it can support the sinew backing and give you good power without causing um, compression failure. Gives you a first opportunity to send you back. It is simple, and it takes a lot less tendons than a 64-inch bow with wider limbs. This is it. Enjoy, and thank you so much for watching this video.